what's going on everybody it's donna g buckets here don't forget to like comment subscribe thank you for all the support i'm almost at 400 uh subscribers right now that's a that's big for me on youtube um we're about to react to the 10 worst contracts in the nba right now i'm expecting to see john wall on here his contract is pretty bad but <laughs> this is a video by nonstop nonstop sports so yeah let's go ahead and get into this contracts in the nba are based on player skill team need market and timing we have seen a lot of mammoth contracts given to players just because they hit free agency at the right time. Yep. Mainly in 2016, when the new TV deal caused a huge spike in the salary cap. However, NBA GMs have gotten more careful recently because everyone realized the consequences of overpaying role players like Timofey Mozgov and Bismack Biyombo. <laughs> that being said, there are still some bad contracts in the NBA. Here are the current top 10 undeserving salary cap gobblers. John Wall. Yep, I knew it. Years, I knew it. 170 million. 170 million remaining. John Wall was one of the premier point guards in the NBA when he was healthy. How much is that a year? Demon with the ball, tenacious defender, and unselfish playmaker. That's over 40 million a year. A franchise point guard. There were some signs for concern though. He is not a good shooter, had knee problems, and never went far in the playoffs. But when oh, the good block, though. His contract, it's 40 million a year for him? However, in the 2017-18 season, following his contract extension, a knee injury limited him to 41 games. Knee, he grabbed his Next foot. Year, a heel injury sidelined him for the rest of the year, but it wasn't the worst news yet. He developed a staph infection in the heel, and after he slipped in the bathroom, he tore his Achilles. <laughs> injury in basketball. This man slipped in his bathroom and tore his Achilles. Especially tore his Achilles slipping in the bathroom. Speed and athleticism. Wall will miss the entire 1920 season and is set to return next year with three more years of the $170 million deal. Right now, it looks like the worst contract in the league. Yep. Mike Conley, Jazz, five years, $153 million, two years, $67 million remaining. If you thought Chris Paul should be on this list, we don't blame you. We did too. CP3 is earning a whopping $38 million this year and will make 85 more if he opts into the final year of his deal, which he will, and we don't blame him. OKC tried to trade Paul the whole offseason after they traded for him, which proved to be impossible. Nobody wanted a 34-year-old injury-prone point guard who's owed all that money. Thanks. And then CP3 showed all the doubters that he is the best pure point guard in the league rightfully made the all-star team and led his team to the playoffs despite all odds he did precisely what a max player should do and that's why he isn't on the list mike conley on the other hand was supposed to be a missing piece that would put the jazz in serious contention for the title yep he is also making max dollars but he largely underperformed this year he lost his starting spot and is playing the worst basketball. But he loses spot too. What should not happen when you are earning 32 million per year. 32 million a year that bench player? He's on the list instead of CP. Tobias Harris, 76ers. Five years, 180 million. 180 million remaining. In the 1819 NBA season, Tobias he making 30 million? was a borderline all-star for the LA Clippers. In a team with several quality players, but no superstars. Making like 35 million a year or something like that? All Clippers in scoring and Couldn't be me. I ain't paying him that much. He can get 20. GM he ain't getting 30. He already traded for Jimmy Butler that season, and then decided to swing for the fences and trade for Harris as well. In a win now, worry about the future later kind of scenario. Sixers had a good chance of winning it all that season and were four bounces away from reaching the conference finals. And my Kawhi shot. Off season, Jimmy Butler pulled a Magic Johnson move and decided that he's not even going to be there. Harris demanded a max deal and several teams were willing to go for him if he became oh, available. Stadia. I'm not buying that. Not ready to lose both midseason acquisitions, Brand signed Tobias to a maximum five-year, $180 million deal. Which He's not worth that. In different circumstances, but not with He's not worth that. Two max players in Embiid and, and Simmons. Simmons. Basically, Brand decided to pay $35 million per year to a guy that's going to be the... JaVale gets dunked on so much. Now, the Sixers are stuck with very little cap room to do anything else. With the salary cap decreasing, they are going to regret this move in years to come. Nicholas Batum, Hornets, five years, $120 million, two years, $52.7 million remaining. 
Five years ago, he making twenty six million a year. Batum? Million dollar deal. Nick Batum was one of the best small forwards in the league. He was a Swiss Army knife and could do everything on the court. In 2015-16, Batum averaged 15 points, six rebounds, and six. 15 points is not worth 26 million. And defense. He was only 27, and Batum was supposed to be a franchise cornerstone. Along He's gonna make 120 million dollars. Batum. Charlotte officials thought they were paying for his prime years because NBA players usually peak between 27 and 32. Unfortunately for them, Batum already peaked. His numbers went down, his shot disappeared, and it was very clear that he, he said his shot disappeared. That should earn max dollars. He admitted this himself recently and apologized to fans and the team officials for the bad results. Thankfully, his deal expires next year, and Michael Jordan will have a clean slate to make better decisions. The ceiling is the roof for Charlotte. Kevin Love, Cavalier, <laughs> three years, 120 million, 120 million remaining. In the aftermath of LeBron's 30 million a year. departure from Cleveland, Cavs panicked and didn't want to lose all of their All-Stars, so they gave Kevin Love $120 million over four years. Nobody around the league believed that Love should get a max deal, and it's not that Kevin Love is not a good player, he is, but in the time of the extension, he was already 30 and has gone through a great deal of injuries. He's also not a good defender, and despite the fact he can score 20 a night, there are better scorers than him, especially at that price. Love missed almost the entire season. He's a good player, though. He's averaging like 18 and, like, 18 and 10 or something like that. They tried to trade him the whole year, but nobody would bite on that bullet. Tough love, Kevin Love. Blake Griffin, Pistons, $170 million. I love Blake. Three years, $110 million remaining. Blake Griffin is one of the best players in the NBA when healthy. Making like, what, $35 million a year? Very rarely healthy. Just after the Clippers signed Blake to a if he's healthy, he's a top and three to power forward. For life. They also signed Giannis, West. him, Jerry is one of the wisest and uh, AD. History, and arguably the best GM ever. He realized that the team ought to go in another direction and that Griffin's injury-prone stock is too volatile to keep him. They immediately traded Blake to Detroit, where he once again proved he is so much more than a dunker. He also proved Jerry West was right, sustaining knee injuries in each of the past two seasons. Bro, what's up with this stadia stuff? Hey, get closer. What still works? Still works. Still works. Pistons are now in the lottery with Griffin's massive contract on their books and very little hope to move. Gordon Hayward, Celtics, $127 million. Two years, $67 million remaining. Utah Jazz rarely have highly paid like a 30 something million a year. When Hayward hit free agency in 2017, 33 million a year. Decided to reunite with Brad Stevens in Boston, it was considered a huge loss for Utah and a big win for the Celtics. Unfortunately, just a couple of Hayward's been playing good this year though. Debut, Hayward sustained one of the worst NBA injuries in recent memory. His ankle injury was so gruesome that players couldn't even watch as his foot faced in the opposite direction than it's supposed to. Hayward missed the whole season. And when he returned, he simply wasn't Gordon Hayward anymore. His confidence was gone, his shot was rarely falling, and despite a few flashes here and there, his entire Boston episode can't be characterized as a successful one. He began to look more like the Hayward of old this year, but he is still the fourth best Celtic on the roster, behind Kemba, Tatum, and Brown. Yeah. And in a salary cap driven sport, you shouldn't pay your fourth best player max dollars. Gorgie Jang. Memphis, four years, $63 million. Two years, $34 million remaining. In the year that That's not that bad, is it? Like, what, Chang like 15? All 82 games and was pretty solid, averaging 10 points, 8 boards. I mean, he's a role player, though. Above average shooter. However, it was still only 10 points and 8 rebounds, which are good numbers for a backup or the fifth option, but not for a Brinks truck. The Timberwolves didn't see it that way and decided to splash $64 million over four years on Jang, counting on his development. However, they also drafted Carl Anthony Towns with the number one pick, which would mean Jang wouldn't get the opportunity to develop considering they are playing the same position. Basically, they gave a backup center 16 million per year and he played less than 16 minutes per game for them since he signed the deal before they finally managed to trade. They said he's making 16 million a year and he played less than 16 minutes a game. This man is making $1 million a year per minute he plays in a game. Good going, Minnesota. Andrew Wiggins, Warriors. Five years, $148 million. Four years, $122 million remaining. 
another bad contract by the Timberwolves, who were desperate to get rid of it for years. Andrew Wiggins is now a warrior, who will pay him $93 million in the next three seasons. Wiggins showed a lot of This man is making $30 million a year? And averaged 23 points per game when he signed the extension. Considering he was the number one draft pick, it didn't seem like the Timberwolves made a mistake there. However, Wiggins' production dropped significantly after he autographed that $150 million contract, which sometimes happens when you give that kind of money to a 22-year-old. Even though Wiggins was one of the league's best scorers, it was just empty numbers. He didn't play any defense. Despite great physical attributes, he never passed the ball, and his decision-making was straight-up awful. He improved a bit this year, but it was still quite surprising when Warriors chose to trade for him. However, if anyone can squeeze all the potential from him, it's the Warriors. Sure. So this lousy contract might turn up good after all. However, it's not there yet, so he remains on the list. Terry Rozier, Hornets, three years, Scary Terry. $7 million. It's not that bad. Scary Terry became famous during the 2018 NBA playoffs. When like what, 18 million? Like, it's not horrible. I mean, he's like their best player for the Hornets, either him or Devontae Graham. Games. He earned his nickname in the conference semifinals when he outplayed Drew Bledsoe from the Bucks. Sorry, we meant Eric Bledsoe. After Kyrie Irving's return from injury, Rozier was relegated to the bench and made it loud and clear that he should be a starting NBA point guard. The Celtics said no, but the Hornets said yes and gave him a three-year, $57 million deal. As you can imagine, it didn't work out great for the Hornets, who did get 18 points per game this year from Rozier, but with the cost of a poor shooting percentage, bad defense, and low assist numbers from a starting point guard. With the emergence of second-year guard Devontae Graham, Rozier's contract starting to look worse with each passing minute as a Hornet. Thanks, Gary Terry. Oh, worst trades in NBA history. I might react to that one. But, uh, guys, thank you for watching the video. If you made it this far, um, like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram at Donnie G Buckets. Um, until the next video, I'm out.